العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم Remember these are all ad al-adab, right? What are these? Aqwal wa af'al, sah? Behavioral codes, and that's the difference between akhlaq. Because the akhlaq is batin, sijiyah. Okay? So these are behavioral codes. This is how a Muslim conducts himself, subhanallah. Yani, Allahu Akbar, when you actually look at it, the believer is busy the whole day. Wakes up with adhkar. This is not even to mention the adhkar al-masah, al-sabah wa al-masah, the salawat al-khams. The nawafil that you pray, the Quran that you're with, that you must have, and all those other, you know, the charities you're involved. This is just literally walking and acting and behaving like a Muslim. And you're rewarded. Like a Muslim's life is a what? Productive. Productive life. وَعِيَادَةُ الْمَرِيضِ And visiting the sick. Uh, the person visits the sick and it is recommended to visit them more than once. Some people, they visit... And they say, Alhamdulillah, I visited him. It's good to go back again. It's good to go back again. Uh, and obviously in times that aren't suitable. Or qatal munasiba. You can't go and visit them at a time where it's quite difficult for them. And they're shy. You know? You, you hit them with the saif al haya As you say, the sword of uh, shyness. You know what that means? It means you, you make... It's, it's when a person's put in a predicament where... They're too shy to say something because they feel shy of it. So, you know, you don't put that person in that, in that situation. And the person shouldn't remain too long as well. Okay? And when you go there, you should make dua and remind them that it's specifically from those things that you can say is la ba's tahoran, insha'Allah. Okay, la ba's, and this is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done to that old man, Sahih Bukhari, who, who had the fever, and he visited him. Um, nah, and there's great reward. We don't want to talk about the fadl of that because that's another chapter. The great reward that you know, the, the dua that you get from the malaika, etc., etc. Qalu, he says, what tibaul jana is il salati wa dafni, following the janaza, and, yani following the funeral procession, procession. With praying and burying, included praying and burying. But this is lirjal dun al nisa. This is for the women, as opposed to which ones for the women? The burying, the burying, not the praying. The praying, uh, so, sorry, which one's not for the women? The burying is not for the women, but the praying, the women can pray the janaza. Okay, as for the burying, la. But afterwards, they can go to visit the grave. Afterwards. They can't go. We all know the hadith. Kuntu nahitukum an ziyaratul qubur. Kuntu anhaakum an ziyaratul qubur. Kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I used to pray you from visiting the graves. Ala fazuruha. Fatudakkirukum al-akhira. O kama qala. It will remind you of the akhira. Naam. So this is again one of those things that are the haqq of the Muslim. Which are the khams. Okay. Wa wa'a the khams. They basically mentioned it in the hadith Abu Huraira. Haqq al-Muslim ala al-Muslim khams. Raddu salam we mentioned that. Fi'iyadatul marid, we mentioned that, visiting the poor. Uh, sorry, the, the ill. Atiba'ul janaiz, which is now. Wa tashmeetul as, you know, wa ijabatul da'wati, accepting the invitation. Uh, and replying to the artist, the one who sneezed. And as for the fourth, which is uh, invitation, so ulama, they mentioned is wajib, but they said the nikah. The nikah, unless you have a reason, unless you have a reason. One of the reasons that you can reject an invitation for is there's munkarat. The Prophet Sallallahu he rejected himself. When there was a munkar that he saw, he left. And it was particularly, there were cloth, cloths and sheets hanged on the wall. And, he's, and he mentioned there's a prohibition in regards to that, so he left Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also Imam Ahmed practiced this and others have practiced this. Imam Ahmed got invited, he went, saw munkarat and left. So when you go to a nikah and there's music, well, iyadu billah, free mixing, you can leave. And here you're not going against the ijabat al-da'wati. And if you have any general hajat wa daruriyat khasa that you yourself necessities that you can't, that, you know, makes you unable to go. 
But from the many ways, ittiba'ul janaizi. And uh, there's many reward for that as well, just to mention one. The Prophet Sallallahu he says, uh, the one who goes for the janaza, hatta yusalla alayha, falahu qiratun, then he gets a qirat. And then he says, but the one, and then the one who goes, stays until hatta yudfana falahu qiratan. He gets qiratan, they say, Ya Rasulullah, wa man qiratan, he said, mithlul jabalayn in azimayn. He said, like two great mountains of reward. So one for the salah, and then when you follow to the burial, you get another one. So that's two great mountain of rewards. Allahu Akbar. Qawluhu uh, then he says, وَالْآدَابُ الشَّرْعِيَّةِ عِنْدَ دُخُولِ الْمَسْجِدِ وَالْمَنْزِلِ وَالْخُرُوجِ مِنْهُمَا The adab, remember the behavioral codes of shari'iyah, of the shari'a, which are legislated, when entering the masjid and the manzil and when exiting them. So we take the first one, entering the masjid. Who can remind me of some? Enter with the right. Enter with the right. Saying that should go for it. Which is? Allah of Tahrir Abu Abu. Naam. Allah of Tahrir Abu Abu Rahmatik. Naam. On a salah, a salah upon the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillah wa salatu salam ala Rasulullah. Allah of Tahrir Abu Rahmatik. Naam. What else? Tahiyat al Masjid, mashaAllah. Naam. And we can add in our day and age, not leaving your shoes in front of the entry. Okay? And this actually can be considered as a sin. People take it lightly. Where do they leave their shoes? In harmful places. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Huh? <laughs> Naam, that's a general qa'idah you can put under that. But there's something specific he said for that. لا ضرر ولا ضرر no harm or no reciprocating of harm but also تفضل I think he don't put something in the pathway نعم removing something harmful from the tariq Ibn Uthaymin he says مفهوم المخالفة that means if you put something that will harm the people in the path you're sinning so it's dangerous when you come in the masjid تخلع Na'alaini, just like that, khalas, someone's going to trip over it. Taban, people, they know, people know nowadays, but it could happen. It could happen. So, and, and it's a masjid, so it's from the adab of masjid, well, common day ones anyway. Um, nah, and a similar to that is always parking, you know, parking on entrances, parking in ways that are dangerous and stuff like that. Well, manzil, what are from the etiquettes of entering the manzil? Naam, say in the dua. Giving salam to the people of the household. Giving salam to the people. What's the dua to come in the house? You guys forgot the dua. It's one of those things you have to pretend that you're doing it now. He <laughs> closes his eyes. <laughs> the way you close your eyes. Bismillah. The su'al is what's the dua for entering the house? Uh, نعم. So, so, and what else? You can enter with what? Miswaq. Also, enter Miswaq and Salam upon the people. Nam. Salam upon the people. Some of the ulama they mention if you go into a majlis and there's no one, no one there, what do you say? Alamani taba al huda. Some have mentioned that. Allah, I have not seen no delay for that. Allah, Allah. Uh, not that, that it doesn't exist. I personally haven't looked into it. نعم ولا نعم قلنا قلنا إيش الدخول المسجد نعم والمنزل والخروج منهما خروج منهما and exiting them both. Obviously you exit with the left. For as regards to the masjid, uh, as regards to the manzil, you end exit with the dua. You say توكلت على الله الحلو وقلت إلى بلاد. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says that kufit wahudit that you have been sufficed, you have been guided, وَتَنَحَى عَنْهُ الشَّيْطَانَ الشَّيْطَانَ was going to flee from you. أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. نعم, then the Sheikh says, وَالتَّبْرِيكُ بِالزَّوَاجِ and what is تَبْرِيكُ meaning saying the duas of baraka for the one, for the newly wed. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكُمَا وَبَارَكَ عَلَيْكُمَا وَجَمَعَ بَيْنُكُمَا فِي خَيْرٍ You guys have memorized this. After a belly full of beris, صح? نعم والتعزية في المصاب أن دون التعزية في المصاب 
and there's ahkam al ta'ziya and there's a lot of now innovations that have entered upon al ta'ziya uh, making food especially sadly the family of the deceased are the ones who take on the tireless job and responsibility of catering while mourning just think about it wallah is ajeeb catering i mean uh, i spoke to one christian and um, they said when they i don't know what fraction of christianity they were or what sect but they said when they when someone dies they party for three days they party not one yeah one not two three days three days and this person who i was talking to was actually dressed well he was going to one he was going to one so where are you going to a party yeah someone died i was like huh how are you going to a party when someone died? He goes, oh, yeah, then he started explaining to me. That's what we do. We do party. No, and it's not, even, um, it's not even like everyone's there and it just happens to be a nice vibe because there's everyone there. No, they fully, you know, I would be like disco, the whole thing. They go dance, dress nice, drink, laugh and joke. Ajib. Ala kulli hal, we're not far away from following, Ish. The previous nations. Now we're starting off with... You know, after the janazah, someone says, Ah, oh, there's a food in such and such a restaurant. Habada and Tati. No. So uh, there's no such thing. And also, we say it's for three days. It lasts for three days. So after two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, okay, you know, the Muslim, he meets calamity with muqabil and hasanin. He doesn't meet calamity with, with calamity with ta'amuq fihi. And he dove in into it and being engrossed by it. Someone passed away, ya akhi. Kulu nafsin dha'iqatul maut. Right? So, naam. And, and, and it's, it's, uh, it adds to the musibah. So, the one who is, yani, a calamity is befallen, yani, such as the deceased. <coughs> naam. Then the Sheikh mentioned, Mada, qala la la wal mazir wal khurja in the sun. Naam. وعند السفر and the adab of a suffer who knows some of the adab of a suffer someone's traveling what's the some of the adab no 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 well, that's a guest you're talking about the guest you have to look out for three days we're talking about someone who's traveling who knows some of the adab of traveling good 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 what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says? Hadith narrated Ibn Habban, authentic. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the third, the th- no, no two, but he says, uh, he said, uh, uh, the actual words of Hadith, Subhanallah, man sani, Allah, shaitan, did it. Rakibani, he says, Rakbu, shaitan, he says, one person is traveling, as if he's traveling with the shaitan. Two, Similar. Three are travelers. Three are travelers. And the ulama, they mention some of the reasons for this is that one person, subhanAllah, anything can happen to him. And he has no one there beside him. Two people, they may get in an argument. There's no third. Huh? SubhanAllah. And you're traveling, it's, it's tough times. That's why Umar ibn Khattab, he said, you don't know a person until you ask one of the things is you traveled with him. Why? Because these times you may be at each other. Because now someone's, you're all tired, he takes consideration of your fellow traveller, your co-pilot, if you will. You have to consider him, you know. So you're tired and now you have to like kind of be very spacious in your heart and consider him. And you know, not many, not many people can do that, so you easily can clash. So anyway, ala kulli hal, the point being that uh, two people, that's what could happen. So a third is good to travel with. However, some of the ulama have mentioned that, I think it's Sheikh Abdullah Karim al Khudair, if I'm not mistaken, but some of them have mentioned it doesn't apply on planes because you're technically not traveling alone. Although those people that are strangers in the plane, they're kind of, you know, obviously, taban, this is for the man, right? The woman, Aslan, she should never travel alone anyway. Um, also, what do you do? You take a Amir from them, right? You take a Amir, okay? Uh, and this Amir, obviously, has some of our sah. You hear in the bay, you don't, you know, argue with him if he wants to stop at the service station. 
and you listen to him. I mean, obviously, you pick one as well based upon ilm. You know, it doesn't mean just because he's the driver, he's worthy of being an amir, right? Uh, you know, how many, how many amir, quote-unquote, drivers have killed people, <laughs> you know? So those are just some of the etiquettes when traveling. Uh, also, and then he says, وَمَعَلْ وَالِدَيْنِ And you have to have etiquettes with the parents. And that is not, you know, peculiar or not, not basically, um, it's, it's something that's known to all of you. We don't have to go into that bab. aqarib and the relatives. Okay? And uh, who's considered the relatives? Aqarib. Some of the ulama, they mentioned, due to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, in which when he was addressing his family members, he started mentioning all the tribes. So he went to, some of the ulama, they say even eight granddads. Eight granddads, you have to kind of know about them, keep in contact, just by saying salams as well. And this is from the etiquettes of the Muslim, that they keep tabs. Otherwise, it's qati'atul ish ar-rahim. It's from severing the ties, and that's a major sin. And also al-jiran. From the etiquettes of the jiran, we mentioned last week. Did we mention last week? We did, right? We mentioned the doors, the neighbors, what's considered a neighbor. Um, no. Nah. So inshallah refer to that obviously. La da'ya li dhikriha. Wal kibar was sigar. And obviously the young and the old. They have rights to in dealings. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Laysa minna man lam, man lam yuwaqir. كبيرنا ويعرف حق ويوقر حق كبيرنا ويرحم صغيرنا أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم. They're not from us the one who doesn't honor uh, and show digni, dignified relation to the one who's older and who doesn't have mercy to the one who's young. So look at the words of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He says specifically show mercy because that's what they need from you the most. We get short. The more older you get, the more short tempered you get, right? And somehow you forget وجدك ضال فهدا. You forget كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ So you forget you was like that previously, you was young. You know, you know, say, oh, this new gen, this new generation. You, you as a new generation to the ones who are older than you. هكذا. وَالتَّهْنِئَةُ to بِالْمَوْلُودِ And also saying the tahni'a, which is what? The congratulations to the person who has a newborn. Okay. And At-Tabarruq, uh, naam, At-Tabarruq, la, Tabarruq, I'm saying. Ah, Tabriku bi zawaf, we mentioned that. Wa ta'ziyatu bi anamsa, wa ghayri thalik, naam, he said, wa ghayri thalik min al-adab al-islamiyyati fi al-lubsi wa al-khali' wa al-inti'al. And other than that, from the Islamic codes and behaviors of dressing and, and removing the clothes, there's dua for wearing clothes, or especially new clothes, for re, you know, removing clothes, al intial as well, wearing slippers. So slippers, for example, or shoes. What do we do? Right first. Uh, wearing them. Wearing them right first, right? All right. What times? What times? Yeah. Taib. We'll end it there, and we'll go inshallah ta'ala al dars al sabi ashar seventeenth al tahdiru min al shirki wa anwa al maasi. Now we spent a lot. On a shirk last time. We've done a big bath on that. On a shirk. What's the definition of shirk? They made taswiyah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making him impar and making equals or giving shares in his divinity and this is all taken as the shaykh says التحذير من الشرك وانواع المعاصي الحذر والتحذير من الشرك وانواع المعاصي ومنها السبع الموبقات المهلكات وهي الشرك بالله والسحر وقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق وأكل الربا وأكل مال اليتيم وتولي يوم الزحف وقذف المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات 
ومنها عقوق الوالدين وقطيعة الرحم وشهادة الزور والأيمان الكاذبة والأيمان الكاذبة وإذاء الجار وإذاء الجار وظلم الناس في الدماء والأموال والأعراض وشرب وشرب المسكر ولعب القمار وهو الميسر والغيبة والنميمة وغير ذلك مما نهى الله عز وجل عنه أو رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Uh, so we spoke about shirk already, so you can refer to that, inshallah. Wa minha sab'ul mubiqat, al-muhlikat. And this is obviously taken from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, stay away from the seven deadly sins. Mubiqat, al-muhlikat. And they destroy. Uh, but there's not these seven alone. Okay, and from the books that you can refer to, it's from the books of Muhammad Dhabi that you're all familiar with. Kitab al-Kaba'ir. The book of major sins. But the first one he says, Ashirku Billah, associating partners with Allah. Then as Sihar. And as Sihar, the person who does Sihar, he does two things. Or two things are done for him to become a Sihar, a Sahir. Firstly, is Nabdu Kitab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to throw the book of Allah away behind him. And the second is to follow the actions of the shaitan that get him to commit the sihr. And the ruling obviously for that is al-qatslu wa in tab, even if they repent. As I've mentioned. Wa in tab, naam. And there's, uh, there's two types of sihr. There's sihr al-haqiqi, actual sihr. And then there's Sihr al Khiali. Yukhayyul ilayhim anna tasa. It was made to seem so that the stick was a snake. It seemed so. So it's like a sha'wada that you see. And the sleight of hand, that's what they call it, right? Sleight of hand and these tricks. Okay? Yeah, illusions. That's, that's min dimni shirk, but it's the second type. Okay, so the haqiqi one is the one that they do, obviously, al-ruqa, al-ta'aliq, you know, they hang things, and they do offerings, wal-iyadu billah, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, disastrous actions. Then he says, وَقَتْلُ النَّفْسِ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ and killing the soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, yani taken a life except in truth. نعم سو وقتل النفس التي حرم الله الا بالحق قال الله تعالى والذين يدعون مع الله الها اخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله الا بالحق يعني and the person doesn't take a soul that is يعني النفس which is المعصومه soul which is not to be shed يعني a soul which is not to be taken يعني killed and there's many ahadith in the sunnah that talk about its dangers and also ayat. <clears throat> they said that uh, also the person who uh, the person who kills sometimes as well. They say about killing that the person does with killing. Ma la yafalu sahiru fi sana or shahr is a statement that says the person who kills his damage. Is that which even a magician can't do in a year or a month. Why? Because there's a knock-on effect. Killing is... Uh, magic, when you do magic on someone, it's not exactly generational effect. Killing is generational effect. So you've taken someone, like basically someone in the family tree now is missing. It's 
especially if, if it's even worse if that's a dad, right? Because they're now children are what? Orphans, you've created orphans now, right? And then what have you done? Created poverty. So much comes out of it. Allahu Akbar. Now. Uh, the seven Mubiqat. Yeah, Namima, Nam, Nam. That's, that's also similar to that, yeah, Namima. And Namam, we're going to mention that as always from there. But the person who is, the person who kills, the ulama, they mentioned that even if the person, because, because remember the person who's, who kills, Sheikh Abdul Rasad al Badr, he mentions this in his Sharh, Abdul Rasul Muhimma. He mentions that a person who kills, that remember the one he killed has a right, but he's not there to speak. So the one who may have forgave him or give blood money or whatever, right? Either he's killed like for like, that's because the family want to get that right. Or they want to get the money, or they forgive him, right? But he's still going to stand with that person. Do you get it? There's a farq. So because you may think, okay, khalas, he's given blood money, he's free. No, you're, you're going to meet this. This person will probably never forgive you. If he finds out, he comes and he's like, you're the one that killed me. You know, so it is, subhanAllah, it is highly, highly detrimental. So that's why the shaykh, he says, وَلَيْسَ ثَمَّ إِلَّا الْقِصَاسِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allahu Akbar. There's nothing except qisas يوم القيامة. <clears throat> and also killing of oneself. Allah says, "Wala taqtulu anfusakum." That Allah Azza wa Jal is merciful to you. And then He said, "Rahimullah, wa aklu mal al yatim." That Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Inna al ladina yaakuluna amwal al yatama zulman inna ma yaakuluna fi putunihim nara." Those who eat the wealth of the yatama, the orphans, they eat in a pun. Their bellies, fire. And it's a major sin, why? Because there's another hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he says, no one is made entrusted or responsible for anything and he doesn't take care of it, except that he will be punished. Whatever responsible. So you're responsible, your representative for that child until he reaches sinul bulugh, until he reach, reaches maturity or, or puberty. So a person eating all that, right? Is a major sin. But if the person uses it, for example, in a, he funds it towards something that's going to be beneficial for the orphan and he knows best, he knows what's fit for, for that, then he's allowed to use it. But he has to be very careful. He has to be very careful. <clears throat> now, we'll stop there, inshallah, and we'll, we'll talk about aklu riba. Uh, in the next lesson. Any questions?